Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Tech Fit. This is Gaurav and today we are looking at one really interesting topic. How would I actually learn data science if I had to start all over again? Again, this advice is also for myself. So if, say for an example, if I want to give advice to myself and I passed out from the college, what advice would I give to myself if I wanted to move into data science field? So I hope you find this content useful. And if you're looking for some advice in this field, even if you're trying to move from some other areas such as finance or sales, you want to move into data science. So I hope you find this content interesting. Please subscribe to my channel and click on the notification sign for my future upcoming videos. Again, that definitely motivates me to make more content for you guys and I hope you enjoy this content. So without wasting any more time, let's start looking at the path that we can take for learning data science. If you think I'm talking too fast and maybe the things are not clear to you, you can actually reduce the speed of this video by controlling it through the YouTube controls. So first of all, I kind of want to leave one of the caveats out, which is around either how much time will it take to learn each and every aspect of data science. Again, depending on your learning rate, depending on how you quickly you get and could grip on different things, it it's, it's kind of varies from people to people. So I don't want to really force more time on that. So let's look at the first point, which is which programming language to choose, especially if you're working into the data science field. There are two popular languages. Again, one, one is your Python and one is your R. I know this is quite a confusing question and a lot of people do ask this question to me as well. Which language to choose? Do I Should I go and learn Python or should I go and learn R? And the simplistic analogy I want to put on this is like if you look at this image, so basically you're looking at Superman and Batman. Again, they both have their own fan followings and they both are powerful. So if you're coming from a programming background, it'd be more likely that you would be more interested to learn Python. You already have some sort of niche clear in terms of understanding of programming language. So that's why you can easily get a good grip on Python code. Python is really elegant. Again, if you look at the code, it's quite structured code whenever you're working with Python. If you share a code in Python with somebody, again, it's really easier to understand what exactly is happening in the code if you do have some basic knowledge and understanding of Python. So to actually explain more in detail about Python and R, what I want to kind of cover is what exactly Python and R is used in. Again, Python is used by a lot of programmers who are actually maybe moving from programming field to data science field, or even if they're working in within their own field and they have a good understanding of programming language. Again, Python is really easy to learn and easy to use. Similarly, R is, R is used in more in academics and research. Again, a lot of researchers actually use R because again, there are a lot of uh, statistical packages that you can actually use within R, which is really advanced. And also you have a lot of different libraries for visualization, such as you can obviously use ggplot. Then you have leaflet for your geo mapping. And then also you have high charters, you have plotly, which are really, um, which are really advanced visualization packs, which can actually help you to present your data to your users. Again, said that, Python also has a lot of different visualization packages such as matplotlib and you have seaboard you do have plotly within python as well coding and debugging is also quite easier in python in comparison to r but r, r does have a lot of different packages like shiny dashboards and you have flexi dashboard which you can use and dynamically create your dashboards and have them running quite easier i do have another video which is on r shiny apps which is again where i kind of like bring you guys through end-to-end -end deployment of shiny app and i show you a real life example if you're working as a data scientist what type of projects you would work at so we look at in that video a real good example of one of the project from end to end and give you a good understanding of what type of task you would be performing as a data scientist python has a robust ecosystem again which is commonly considered as a really easier programming language to use r has a rich ecosystem for cutting edge interface packages available to communicate between open source languages so python actually focuses more on readability and simplicity of your code so if you're if you're looking at your learning curve within python it will be linear and smooth again if you're looking within r again r is really easy easier if you're starting to work into data science field and you want to kind of like get basic understanding and start working with the code it's quite easier to understand and learn and sometimes if you're looking at advanced libraries within R it's kind of like complicated to actually build that expertise within that package to actually understand it from end to end so within Python you also have a lot of deep learning packages which are really good to uh, build your models again you can use PyTorch you could use Keras which has a Tiano and TensorFlow background so again and within R you can also use deep learning packages that, such as S2O but again 
One of the things I do prefer is working with Python if I'm working on some sort of deep learning project where I do want to use these libraries which tends to be more faster. But again you can also use Jupyter where you can actually use your plots and build something similar. Again I'm showing you a couple of different analyses while I'm actually talking about it such as the different visualization packages I've used in R, some different uh, visualization packages that I've used in Python as well. So my verdict on both of them again if you're trying to get into this field and trying to learn data science if you do have some sort of basic understanding or niche of programming language maybe start learning Python. Again Python is really popular and it will also become more popular within coming years and you're coming from complete different background where you don't really have any knowledge of a programming language and you don't really understand any of the basics of programming maybe it might be good to actually begin with R to uh, have got a good understanding on R and start learning the language itself. So that would be really good to actually have understanding of both the languages. Maybe you begin understanding one language first and once you are kind of like working on different projects within it you can actually start getting a good grip on Python as well. So when I started working in this field I actually started learning R first. I didn't really work on that much on Python but then after that uh, I worked on R for a couple of years but after that I moved towards Python and I started learning Python more as well and currently as in today I do work on both of them. So depending on the project I'm working on, if I want to get something up and ready, say for an example, if I'm trying to build some sort of dashboard, I usually tend to move towards R where I can easily populate some sort of analysis and get it all together and basically share with the business. If I have some tasks that is more on terms of long-term deployment of the model, I do tend to choose Python. Again, it is more readable and simplistic. Again, if you're working with different colleagues, it might be easier as well for them to get a good grip and understanding on your code without you have to explain that. I get sometimes it becomes really complicated if you want to hand over your code in R to other users. Again, you have to kind of like explain them each point, but whereas if you're working in Python, the functions itself and the simplistic and elegant way of writing that code makes it a lot easier for people to actually just look at the fun different functions and understand what exactly is happening in that code. But then I do also recommend if you learn one language, do work on different projects within it and actually get a good grip on that programming language first before moving to the other. But once you understand it from end to end and you have a good knowledge and good grip on different packages that you are using within your projects or if you're working for some company and you have used those packages maybe it might be actually good to sometimes move around and work within Python as well because again these both languages are really powerful and really good within this data science field and if you know both of them that would just work in your favor depending on if you move to a new company and if they are more likely to use Python because again it also depends what exact coding language was that company was using before so say for example if you move to one company where there might be a data scientist before you and he was using R and he has deployed a lot of different models already in R so it might be good to actually have that understanding of R so you can actually reverse engineer the code and you can understand what exactly is happening within that code and if you work to some other company in which where Python is more widely used within that company and a lot of the projects are worked within Python so you going into that company as an R user might be that you have to work on your own models from the scratch whereas you can't really reuse any else's code because again when you move to one of the companies that could be one of the niche understanding that they want from you to have a good understanding of R or have a good understanding of Python because again they are looking at their current model that they have within their company and the current projects that are currently running with their company and they want you to have a good grip on those as well so you actually understand both the codes within if you move into a new company so I hope this kind of like answers your question and gives you a good understanding so basically I'm recommending you to learn both of them but again do pick one first and get a good grip on it and then move to the second one. So second is obviously your knowledge around maths and statistics and you can sign up to some basic courses which will give you some understanding on statistics and maths. Again you don't really have to be afraid of them. That will be your niche on which you'll be building your data science career. One thing I would actually recommend myself is doing more online courses like uh, studying more courses in universities and going and studying data science within those but again it's not really a requirement. If you want to work within this field there is a lot of content out there online. Again you can use the power of internet and actually find these courses. I do have a video where I kind of like talk about courses within data science and some of the courses are actually free so you can basically start today for free and learn about data science but the whole point for these day courses would be to actually get a good understanding within this field get your basics clear which is more on the maths and statistics and having different type of subjects where you're focusing more on data analysis data mining 
working with different data sets and also moving towards machine learning algorithms and building different types of algorithms. So I hope you find that video interesting as well, which again, where we talk about different types of courses and obviously I show them on a scale of starting from free, going towards a more advanced online course. So one thing I would recommend doing within these online courses would be to actually pick and choose different types of projects that you want to work on. Maybe there's some specific data set that you might be interested in and you want to kind of like do some analysis on that. So it'd be really good to actually use all the learning that you're getting from the free online course and actually applying that onto some new data set which is on which you're working from the scratch. Especially on internet you do have a lot of different help you can get from Stack Overflow. You can actually talk to different people within this data science field and get their help in terms of if you're stuck at any point when you're coding. Especially if you're working on some project I would recommend you to also have a bit of understanding on Git where you can use different cloud based words such as GitHub, Bitbucket where you can actually deploy your code which again would be something that if you're moving into this field your interviewer would be interested in. So if you show them that you have worked on these projects and you have them in your CV you can obviously talk about them because all they want to see that you do have any experience in this field and especially if you don't really have any experience you're coming from a finance or a sales background you do have to prove yourself in terms of that you have worked on different types of data set and you have done these end-to-end -end projects so actually the manager who's taking your interview can see that you're interested in this field and you have worked on different projects especially if you're going for an interview in this field I've recommended you to do your homework and also work on different interview questions that could be asked to you within that interview. All of this read the job spec really in detail so you have all the, the the requirements that they have asked for you have them and also if you're applying for some company I would also recommend you to learn about that company. So obviously when you apply for that job and you go for the interview they can actually see that you're interested in learning more and you have already done your homework and you already have get some good understanding of what the company is trying to do and what are their goals that they want to achieve. And if there's some requirement that's been mentioned in the job spec that it would be a good skill to have, I would recommend you to have some, some basic understanding clear within those so you can actually show that you're eager to learn. And even if you don't really have that skill set, you can once you move into the role, you'll be easily able to adapt to that. So once you have a good understanding of one programming language, I would recommend you to also learn one markup language. Again, especially for markup language, you can do something like SQL, which is your structured query language. Why? Because again, when you move into one of the companies, especially if you're working on some projects on your own you don't really need that skill set because you can all easily maybe read csv or you can actually access if it's in a different xml or json format you can easily use that and basically bring that into your code if you're working in one company again they would have their own database where the, the actual data is being stored and majority of the time the database would be a legacy database where they do have a markup language to basically extract that information so it would be good to have SQL knowledge, which is your structured query language. Again, I do have another video in which I do go in basics on SQL. So if you're trying to learn SQL, that will be a good video to watch, which will give you a good understanding of different types of subtopics that you have within SQL. And you can have that knowledge when you are trying to move into a new role and get a good understanding on SQL. So they can see that that will be a value add to hire you instead of somebody else who don't really have that skill set on their CV. SQL is really easy to understand again if you're coming from a different background I understand that you might have to get a good understanding of the basics first if you don't really use it on a day-to-day -day basis you're more likely to forget it and once you move into the job you do have to extract the data so once you're using it on a day-to-day -day basis you would have a good understanding of SQL but again I would recommend you to at least have some basics clear and that video would be a good help for that a lot of people will be saying, yeah, well, I can run the uh, SQL code within R and Python. But again, the point is that you're not really just extracting the raw data. Because again, if you think of it this way, if a table size is 1 million rows and your query concept isn't something specific and you try to extract all that information into the memory within Python or R, it's really hard. And sometimes you would be, if your computer memory is not big enough, it would give you a lot of different errors. Especially if you move into companies, you do have that constraint where you might be getting laptop with child maybe 16 GB RAM and max so again it might be slightly hard to actually bring all that data into your memory so that's why you use SQL again SQL will help you to maybe bring subset of the data which you exactly are trying to run maybe a lot of processing you can actually do within SQL rather than actually bringing the whole code into the memory which is in within Python and R so you can do all that work within your database and bring a certain type of data set within your code in Python and R then you can do your more advanced analysis within Python and R so how would you actually pick your projects? 
Again, I would recommend you to use Kaggle for this. Again, Kaggle, you will find all your code and data you will need for your data science work. You can use over 50,000 public data sets and 400,000 public notebooks to conquer any analysis in no time. Again, if you're getting into this field, it's all about practicing and also getting that niche understanding clear for which, again, Kaggle would be a really good example because you do have different data scientists who are posting their notebooks out. So if you are stuck at some point, you can actually use their notebooks, how they actually try to solve that problem, which, which will give you a good understanding and as well a structure in terms of how do you approach a data science problem from end to end. And again, you can use different types of algorithms that they have used for the machine learning models. And what would I recommend after that would be to actually use that model and look at the source code for that model and have a good understanding of what that model is trying to do and have a good basic understanding of the maths behind it before you jump onto the theory understanding of that model. Because that would clear out a lot of understanding of what exactly model is trying to do without jumping to worth looking at if you're trying to run your model and then you're not getting good enough results because maybe you don't really have a good understanding of the maths behind the model or a good understanding of what that model is trying to predict and also if you have a good understanding on the maths behind that model you can easily adapt to it and see what different types of data you can use this model on so once you have gone through the source code and you have a basic understanding of the model and you have understanding around the maths what has been used within that model it will be good to actually then apply that model from the scratch maybe pick a different type of data set on which you can actually use that algorithm and basically try to apply it from end to end so do all your data processing data exploration analysis where you understand what type of data it is then also applying that model on top of that and once you apply that model also do your parameter tuning and understand exactly what different types of metrics or parameters that you can change within that algorithm once you do that then you can similarly choose different types of algorithms and also compare them with each other because that would give you more understanding of different types of algorithms and what works best for different type of data set so within data science field i would also recommend you to pick and choose different types of advanced topics so maybe you can look at something like computer vision NLP or deep learning models. So for an example, you can maybe choose neural nets and have a good understanding of how does neural nets train and understand the maths behind that and have a good understanding of where neural nets are being used and how they are being used. So finally, to recap everything, if I'm trying to move into this data science field, what would be the recommendation I would give it to myself in terms of the timeline? So obviously picking one programming language and creating a good understanding of that language. And then also moving towards having a good understanding of one of the markup languages. And to get my basics clear and have a good understanding of this field to do online courses if I don't really have much time to actually join universities because maybe if I'm already working in all the fields and I'm trying to move into data science field maybe doing some online courses first to get a good understanding of this field and see if there's something I'm interested in and if I am maybe moving towards more advanced courses or maybe joining universities on a part-time basis. Then actually looking at different types of data science projects and maybe picking different types of data set from Kaggle and creating good understanding from end to end how to work on different types of models or how to do exploratory data analysis. Creating a good understanding of different types of algorithms and basically applying them to different data sets and having a good grip on that source code and different algorithms to be able to use and reuse them on different data sets. Finally, picking up some advanced topic and getting a good understanding of where this field is moving towards. Again, overall, I would just give you one tip. You can actually start today to free online courses to get a good understanding of data science. Also, you can have some basic understanding of stats and mathematics. If you've done some mathematics in your Leaving Cert or in your college, again, you can use that knowledge and you can extend more on that by doing some more advanced courses within maths and statistics to actually get your basic niche clear. So one thing on this overall view, I would definitely say like if you really want to move into this data science field, do hold yourself accountable for everything, every learning aspects. Like if you're say for an example, if you want to reach and if you want to basically reach the level where you can actually be hired as a data scientist, I would recommend you to kind of like go through all these steps and also learn about data science fields and maybe set up some sort of um, goal for yourself. So say for an example, if as on today, maybe your goal could be by the end of the week, I want to have a complete understanding of linear regression model and I want to understand exactly what's the maths behind it and how does it actually work and have a good understanding on the source code of the programming language that you have picked and you're working on. So that would be really good for yourself because then you're holding yourself accountable to achieve that goal and once you achieve that goal 
goal, then you can move towards the next goal. And by the time you finish all these small goals and you look back, you would have a really good understanding around this field and you would be able to apply that knowledge into your new job. So I hope you found this content useful and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel and it helps me to actually grow my channel and it helps the YouTube algorithm to recommend my videos to other people who are seeking for this advice. Thanks again guys for watching this video, I really appreciate your response and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.